Good afternoon. I guess we're still maybe good morning. Welcome to Healthy 56258 Lunch and Learn. My name is Stacy Frost, and we're very excited to have you all here today. Um, we got a little ambiance going so you can see the PowerPoint. Um, just want to thank everyone for being here, and especially the Chamber, Karen Van Coolen, uh, Women's Connect event. Definitely work to partner with you for that today. Um, we also want to thank um, Chelsea Lund. She's going to be taking some pictures throughout the event. So if um, that's what she's doing. And then Daily Grind and Bagels and Brew uh, provided our lunches uh, for today. So I want to thank them for helping us out with a healthy lunch. Um, please continue eating. This is a working lunch. So please feel free to continue on with what you've got. And if you need more water or anything. And at your table, I'll just run through a couple of housekeeping things. We've got bright yellow folders for everyone. And those folders contain some pretty important documents, but we're not going to go through those because there's nothing worse than having those read to you or a PowerPoint read to you. So we just want you to have that for reference um, throughout today. There is one document, though, that I'd really like to encourage you to pull out right now, and that's a reply device. And that's got some boxes for you to check. And we've got some spectacular door prizes at each table. We also have got a large door prize. Um, let's start with the prizes at each table. And the way we're going to do that is it will cause you to do a little bit of networking right away to start out the event. Uh, we want to go with whoever's got the closest birth date to today will win the table's door prize. So can you figure that out pretty quickly in your group? What are you doing? Stop. All right. Does anyone have a birthday today? All right. I know of someone very special that has a birthday tomorrow, but I work with her, and she will be very mad if I lift her up in front of everyone. So happy birthday, friend. Uh, so the reply device that you just pulled out, that's going to help be your guide. If you say, I wonder when this thing's going to get over. Just take a look at the reply device, and if we haven't talked through that page, you um, can kind of see where we're at by that as our agenda. Um, that's also your ticket out of here today, so please do fill it out, and be sure to turn it in on that back table right by the door. And that's our way of connecting with you and continuing on to connect with you. Um, we're going to have quite a bit of information today, but also... Um, with that information comes an invitation, and we want to be sure to um, know who's in interested in what different things we've uh, spoken about, and that forum is really our way to do so. All right, so today we'll share who we are as Healthy 56258, what we do, and how we do that. So we are a grassroots community health initiative, and grassroots is very different than the work that most of us do on a day-to-day -day basis. It's much less linear, much less cohesive, much, much more um, uh, chaotic in terms of the moving parts that come with it. But I'm very proud to be able to introduce you to our team today. And um, before I do that, I'd first like to start with thanking our sponsors. Um, we've got some terrific sponsors. Our lunch today was provided through a grant from the University of Minnesota Extension Office. So Mayor Bob Burns, if you'd like to stand and give a wave, we'll ask you to share that thank you with your colleagues at the U. So thank you. Our VISTA, AmeriCorps Health VISTA, Faith DePew and I attended a, a Minnesota Food Network convening up in the cities, and the U of M provided mini grants if we wanted to convene our own Food Network meeting in our community. And so we applied for that and received that grant. Our next one we'd like to thank is ADM. We've got the ADM team over here, Kayla and Larray and Wendy, if you want to stand up and give a wave. We're very grateful for your support of Healthy 56258. <laughs> Wendy has been a part of the workforce, uh, workplace uh, wellness uh, initiative and came in at a really interesting time when we were trying to figure out our structure and how we were going to go about business. So Wendy's been very patient with us but I do really thank her for being an advocate for what we're trying to accomplish. And then United Way, where's my United Way team? Thank you for being here, Amanda 
And I want to say um, thank you to these folks. What has happened is we've received grants, both from ADM and from the United Way, to be able to beef up our marketing and our communication and our work. And that's really been apparent in the last year, how we've been able to do that through your support. So thank you very much. And then last but not least, the SMSU Foundation. If we have anybody from SMSU or administrators, anybody want to give a wave? Um, we want to thank SMSU for supporting Healthy 56258. <laughs> Could clap. Um, Healthy 56258 is a part of the university's strategic plan, and it's a very important piece that includes our faculty, staff, and students, but it also is our bridge to the community because that's one thing that we're very committed to is our continued partnerships. So with that, I'm going to step aside before I introduce our whole team, and we're going to just watch a quick video. First, a quote from Tom Hoff. I'm Lynn Schultz and I have been a member of the Marshall community for about 25 years. I've always enjoyed being an active member in the community, whether it's for a school event or larger community boards. When I was asked to join Healthy 56258, I gladly accepted. The focus of the group, creating a healthier Marshall community through healthy eating and physical activity, is what I try to do every day. I have two young adult children who know their mom as someone who puts physical activity and healthy eating as a priority. And I want to continue to be a good influence to them. We need to take any chance we have to create opportunities for health and wellness with those who live and work in our community. I'm excited to be a part of this group to continue to promote health and wellness in Marshall. Hi, I'm Faith Bethute. I came to Marshall four years ago to attend SMSU. I now have my exercise science degree. Currently, I'm an AmeriCorps VISTA working with Healthy 56258. Working with this organization is really satisfying because everyone's working towards the same goal, a healthier future. Hi, my name is Bruce Laprick. I'm Director of Business Services for Marshall Public Schools and part of the Healthy 56258 Advisory Group. I've been part of that group since its inception and find it a very rewarding experience. I've always had a passion for healthy eating and active lifestyle, and this is really an extension of what I've been doing with the school district with our Tiger Wellbeing Group for the past 15 years. Hi, I'm Pam Rogge. I recently became involved in Healthy 56258 because as a member of the Marshall community, I am passionate about helping the community be as healthy as it can be. As someone with younger children, I know firsthand how important it is to stress to our children the importance of eating healthy foods and staying active. If as adults we learn how to practice these habits and model this behavior for our children, will give them the greatest gift of all. Hi, my name is Mary Fisher, and I'm the site manager at Affiliated Community Medical Centers in Marshall. And I'm happy to be a part of Healthy 56258, in part because of ACMC's mission to assure high quality health care in the Marshall community. Our focus is not only on building a strong relationship between the patient and his or her physician, but also helping the patient focus on anything they can do related to prevention and early intervention. And a lot of the initiatives that Healthy 56258 is working toward help us accomplish that goal. Throughout the community, we do facilitate and coordinate all the different acti activities and opportunities that are out there as far as pro providing healthy eating and active lifestyles. And join us because it is a great opportunity for our community. We want to have a healthy and active community that provides good economic development. And this is just one of the facets that will make Marshall a great place to live. All right, so you met a couple of our steering committee members. I'd like to introduce the rest of our team and then we'll get on with our program. So who we are, um, there's volunteers that have been with Healthy 56258 from the very beginning. And by the very beginning, I mean a lot of years ago, sitting in a library meeting room trying to figure out how we're gonna go about this work. And so there's several of you in the room actually that probably started out in a sector. And by sector, I mean we started out with five groups. We had education, community, community at large, uh, health, and let's see, workplace. 
And those five sectors each had teams where they just did a bunch of brainstorming. So for those of you that served with me on community at large, we looked at the broadest possible scope of ideas of what health initiative meant to our community. And then we also did some town hall meetings, which I'm sure some of you attended as well. We just were trying to get our head around the work. There's a lot of different ways to go about it, and we wanted it to be the Marshall way. So from that, we had an operations team, and that was made up of all the sector leads. So we had co-leads for each sector, and then that gave us kind of a leadership group to start with. So we'd come together and kind of compare notes. And this was all based on some research and some um, beginning points that we had from Blue Cross Blue Shield and Harrison Associates. But what happened is we had to continue doing some research and continue doing some legwork. So from there, we got really, really big. As you can imagine, those sectors grew, and we weren't gaining the traction and structure that we needed. So we were able to form a steering committee. We just asked anybody from that operations team if they wanted to come out and, and really just be focused on some plan and create a business plan through the Small Business Development Center at SMSU, and that's exactly what we did. So our steering committee has stayed the course. We've had a bit of transition, but um, I've been really privileged to work with this team of volunteers. So to start out, um, we'll start with Bruce Lamprecht. You heard from him in the video. And then, um, so where are we at? You can continue on. Yep. And then Tom Bolin and Tom Hoff. They're our community work leads, work group leads. And Cass Williams and myself for the school section. And then Chris Cleveland and Judy Pitzel will be sharing today uh, workplace wellness. And then Bruce Lamprecht and Mary, you heard from them in the video. And then Pam and Lynn are our most recent joiners from uh, Schwann, Schwann's company. Proud to have them with us, as well as Melissa Vaughn, who's up in the cities. And then Chelsea Lund, if you'd please come forward. Just have to put your camera down for one second. Chelsea Lund is new to our team. Part of the grant awards that we received was for some marketing, which we were really lacking because none of us are super good at that, and Chelsea is. She's an SMSU alum, and she was the glue that held it together once she came on board to kind of keep us organized. So if you ever have that person in your workplace that's kind of always got you on the hot seat, that's Chelsea in the most complimentary way possible because she kind of put what we had for thoughts into some cohesion, and we're super proud of the website, and she'll show you that later on. So thanks a ton, Chelsea. All right. And then the... Stellar senior picture from an Iowa resident named J.C. Finley. Um, J.C. played soccer at SMSU, and she's going to come back this summer and be a summer internship, uh, summer intern for us, hopefully through a Marshall Community Foundation grant. And she's currently a student at University of Northern Iowa. So we like those Iowa natives. All right, and then last but not least, Faith, could you please come up here? So Faith has been our AmeriCorps VISTA for one year. We've had three years of AmeriCorps VISTA. And Faith has been our face for Healthy 56258, not only in the community, but also in the state of Minnesota. So if I couldn't make it to a meeting, or one of our steering committee members couldn't make it to a meeting, Faith went. And it might be St. James, it might be at the U, it might be at Metro State, but Faith showed up. And she wore a badge and she spoke up. And I think as a community, you'd be so proud to know that if they wanted to know what's going on in Marshall as far as healthy community initiatives... Faith represented us super well, and I was very proud, and I'm going to be missing her, but I've served as her uh, supervisor for one year. And Faith, I hope I've taught you a little, but you've taught me a lot. Faith is super analytical and planful. I am not. And I think what showed me the most, uh, what was most revealing to me was just how much you taught me. So thank you so much, and we've got a little something for you here. All right, so that glue that holds everything together, we've had a VISTA behind the scenes for three years. So that's really why we thought having a summer intern come on wouldn't be such an abrupt um, break for us because that's been a really huge support for us to have that extra hand alongside of us leading. So with that, um, I'd like to turn it over to Lynn Schultz, please, if you want to go into the what Healthy 56258 is. Good afternoon, everybody. So glad to see so many familiar faces in the crowd. 
So I am, um, as Stacy said, one of the newer members on the Healthy 56258 committee. So um, I am just kind of diving in and learning all about what this is and so excited to be a part of, of this group and, and see what kind of changes we can make in Marshall and the surrounding communities. But what um, Healthy 56258 is, right? So you've, you've maybe seen a little bit of us, you've maybe heard about, you know, heard our name and wondered, well, I wonder what that group does. Well, we're going to tell you a little bit about us today. So over the next hour, you'll, you'll hear about us. But basically, it comes down to three things, healthy minds, healthy living, and healthy eating. So if you think about being healthy, our minds, um, our bodies, and what we put into that, and then how we live that out every day. Um, we have um, two really main functions or things that we um, are, are responsible for. We're sp responsible for connecting. We're a connector, and we're doers. So I don't know if you know anybody that's sitting up in this room or on this panel up here. Um, if you do, you know that um, they like to do things. And they're, they're on a lot of committees because they like to be involved and they like to get things done. So that's what we've got um, here. But as a connector, we're really a hub. We're trying to kind of pull things together um, and uh, provide some critical community um, health initiatives and kind of bring every, everybody together so that we're not... Um, all kind of scattered around doing a bunch of different things. So we try to pull things together and connect people um, and processes together. Um, you might have heard of SHIP um, or Green Step. Those are a couple of areas that we've been able to connect um, people and groups together to move forward um, with the work that they're doing. Um, we also want to maximize our impact, right? So lots of people doing small things um, or a lot of people coming together to do one big thing. So that's, that's where you can see our biggest um, effort is, is just in the impact that we're going to pr be providing. And then we also want to eliminate duplication of efforts, right? We don't want six groups doing the same thing and not having a very large impact. Pull us all together, we'll connect everybody together and make a bigger impact. As a doer, um, of course, we want to work on projects that fit within our mission, our vision, um, and our resources. Um, so that, so we're, we're mindful of that. We also want to focus on short-term um, community awareness building events. So making sure just people know about things. Um, that's important to us. As well as um, long-term um, sustainability um, items. And Judy's going to come up here in a minute and talk about um, policy systems and environmental change and how those three things work together um, to make sure that we're we're doing things in the right in the right fashion. Um, we also um, obviously promote healthy eating um, and physical activity. So a lot of the things we do, you will find that it's something that people are doing to get moving, um, or they're making healthier choices um, to to um, feed their body as well um, in that aspect. So Judy, do you want to come up and share a little bit more? So part of securing sustainability is utilizing PSE. What does PSE stand for? It stands for policy, system, and environment. When we alter one or all three of these, we change the future. In our culture, celebrations often include food. Imagine updating a school or workplace wellness policy to encourage building towards five servings of fruits and vegetables per day, as recommended by the USDA. In an effort to decrease our weekly consumption of baked goods or candy, parents and employees would be encouraged to engage in a systematic change of healthy celebrations, which might include countless healthy op options, or an approved catering. Lastly, this transition may require an environmental change, such as awareness through visible signage, posters, newsletters, and may include the need for the designation of a refrigerator or space for these food items. Policy, system, and environmental change across the settings of community, schools, and work sites combined will make a significant local economic impact. You are welcome to see the handout in your yellow folder for more information on that. But in the meantime, please allow me to introduce Tom Hoff. Good morning, everyone. Um, <clears throat> Healthy 56258 has really been evolving over the past three years, and for any of you who have been part of a grassroots organization, 
you know there's lots of peaks and valleys. And I, I know um, Stacy would not want to take credit for it, but without Stacy Frost leading this, th there, was, there was many times along the way that myself and others were wondering, okay, where are we going as an organization and is it worth moving on? But, uh, and I, I mean this in the, <laughs> the biggest compliment, Stacy is a good salesperson and she can push uh, respectfully and uh, that pushing has really kind of got us where we are today. A number of us were part of the Blandon Foundation, and that's really kind of where the origin of this idea of healthy living started through their uh, community leadership training. Of course, we were supported by AmeriCorps VISTA, and we mentioned we have faith, and we've had uh, previous VISTA members on board, been a big help. Um, the Marshall Com Community Foundation has also provided support for that VISTA position. Blue Cross Blue Shield, Harris Associates, uh, helped us with some research early on that showed that Marshall was very interested in workplace wellness, and that's going to be one of the areas that we're going to be focusing on. Uh, North, uh, North Sky Consulting um, helped us determine how our structure should change and really to evolve to a uh, steering committee coalition model. SMSU uh, had been a big supporter of Healthy 56258 and is our anchor institution, so they're providing office space. Marshall Area YMCA stepped up and um, agreed to be fiscal host of our organization, so appreciate that, Tom. And so we're not a separate 501c3. We're a group that is under the umbrella of, um, of Marshall Area YMCA's uh, nonprofit status. So we mentioned we're really uh, trying to be a connector in the community. So a lot of the things we're talking about today, we don't want to um, create the illusion that Healthy 56258 is doing all of these things. We're really in a supportive role many times. And a few things that we've been involved in, um, and I'll talk a little bit later in my section about community, about the bike trail system we have within Marshall, and I know members of our committee, I am also serve on the Green Step Committee, uh, reviewed grant drafts, provided input, wrote letters of support as we're applying for funding for our bike trail system. Uh, we've been involved as representatives for Marshall and statewide initiatives, such as the Minnesota Food Network, Southern Minnesota Food Network. We collaborate with other initiatives around the state, uh, such as Get Fit, Itasca, and Grand Rapids. And uh, we've, we've partnered with really anyone who is willing to partner with us. We're really proud of that connector role. Uh, Chelsea Lund been a great addition to this group. Uh, we really needed that direction in terms of our branding and our uh, professional presentation. Chelsea's been terrific about that. Uh, through, uh, we were able to hire Chelsea through funding through United Way, which we were very appreciative of. So I think we'll have Chelsea come forward and just show a little bit of the work that she and everyone has been doing on the website. Sorry, just a second. Technical problems. Um, so in March, we decided, decided to start redoing the website. And really all this website is is a hub for you. It's a place where you can get a little bit more information about Healthy 56258. Um, the, from learning a little bit more about the history of this group, the structure of the group, um, funding of the group, projects and partners, you can go out there and find out all of that. But really what we're trying to do is provide you with resources above and beyond that. So we have healthy eating. You can learn more about some of the clubs in Marshall, like fruit clubs, um, the CSAs, local stores, on um, the Smarter Lunchrooms movement, to active living. You can find out about the active living opportunities right here in Marshall. So someone new to the community could go out here and find out all this information in one place. Then we have a resources section as well where some of this information may not fit into the other categories, um, but it relates to your health in some way, shape, or form. And Finally, with that, we have our blog. So after this event, we'll be updating the website with some information about the event. You can go out there, find out about that. 
We also have a contact us page, so we are giving you the opportunity to contact us today with those forms that everyone keeps reminding you about. But if you leave and you don't open up the email, which is coming next week, which you should, uh, but you can go out here and contact us this way too. Then we have on the next slide at the very bottom, let's say you go out there and you just don't want to spend the time searching, but you have something very specific you're looking for, type in what you're looking for, you can search for it. Next slide, please. And finally, we are on Facebook, Pinterest, Instagram, and Twitter, so you can connect with us that way as well. And I will turn this over to Tom Bolin. Thank you. Thanks, Chelsea. Uh, my name is Tom Bolin. I'm the director of the YMCA here. Welcome to the YMCA. Glad to have you here. I'm going to talk a little bit about the farmer's market. Uh, how many have been to the farmer's market before? Got quite a few. So going back to that doer's role, we've had a, a farmer's market in Marshall for more than 30 years. Great group of uh, really dedicated vendors outgrowing uh, product to sell, but not a very cohesive group, kind of doing their thing on their own and, and not working so much together. So our connection with the market has been to really try to make it a destina destination market. When we talk about work plan, where we want to get, we want it to be a destination more than a place you go just to get produce, but a place you can go to have entertainment and fun and do family activities and all kinds of things that will bring you in besides the produce. And so to do these activities, we've worked with all kinds of different agencies from the Statewide Health Improvement Program, University of Minnesota Extension, the Healthy 56258, the Y has had a pretty big role in that. And we've gotten grants from the United Way for POP, it's called, um, a, a produce grant, Power of Produce. Little kids this year are going to get $2 tokens certain Saturdays that they can spend to buy what they want to buy. They get to pick that out, and then the vendors end up getting that dollars. But uh, thank you to United Way for that. We've also lately received a grant from the Southwest Minnesota Arts Council. So this summer on Saturdays, we're going to have professional performers, different uh, music groups, some ethnic uh, performers, some kids from, from some different cultures. So uh, all things to, to bring uh, more people in. So we talk about PSC. Um, I want to just hit the market a little bit on, on different things we've done. So systems, the very first thing and how the Y got involved was to have an EBT reader, electronic benefits tra transfer. So last year for the first year, we could take credit cards at the market. We could also take people with SNAP benefits, supplemental nutrition assistance program, and they could use those dollars to, to buy produce at the market. We also had a grant through Hunger Solutions to double those dollars. So if they spent 10, they could get free $10 through a program called Hunger Solutions. So we changed the system. Uh, we also brought the vendors together from a loose-knit group to a, a cohesive group called Friends of the Market, and they have been meeting and doing some things together. They created a governance system uh, so they can now vote. They uh, have officers that, uh, that lead that group, and so we've changed lots of systems to give them more... Uh, more cohesiveness. And then on the policy side, that group of Friends of the Market, they've uh, created policy where they're all going to pay a little bit of a fee, and that fee will go towards marketing, that fee will go towards insurance, and things that will just make the market more of a destination uh, for them to do that. They're also going to have reserved slots for the first time. That was a big deal. There was a competition to get there early, get the slot. They're going to have the same slot all year and be guaranteed that slot. And then on the last side, environment. Um, a little bit earlier, we had a picture of a parking lot, and I can make a big announcement today. I just found out yesterday afternoon, but we're going to move the market to right outside these windows to the Schwann's parking lot. And uh, why we're doing that on the environmental side is where we were before, we didn't have lavatories or shelter in bad weather. We didn't have electricity, all those things. So now all of a sudden, the Y is available water for the vendors, having those bathrooms. We can use this room for recipes or food demonstrations if we want to do those kinds of things. So all kinds of a PSE change in the market. So I'm going to call up Tom Hoff. He's going to talk about a few other community things that we have going on. Oh, I should do that. I forgot about that. We'll do that quick. So we had a little, uh, if we can go backwards. The percentage of vendors that derive their source of farm income only from farmer's market sales. We're going to make you do a little exercise here. So if you think it's 25%, we're going to have you stand up. If farmers, if the, nationally, if they derive their, uh, their sole uh, income from the farm, farmer's market. Anybody think 25%? Stand up. 
We have one brave soul. B, 50%. C, 75, and D, 100. So our brave souls are correct. 25% received their soul market, soul dollars. And I think those are probably markets that are open every day in some big cities and, and uh, things like that that are, are doing that. So here you go, Tom. Thanks, Tom. I know uh, we're excited about the farmer's market. It's been a tradition for us on Saturdays when we're um, home, we will go to the YMCA, <laughs> we'll go get our cup of coffee, and we'll go to the farmer's market, and have always enjoyed that, and really excited about the expansion. So if we could go to the next slide. Um, how many of you have been out on the bike trails in Marshall or to Camden this year? Uh, last week you could have gone cross-country skiing on them <laughs> with a snowstorm. Now you're going to need shorts. Uh, it sounds like this weekend it's going to be in the mid-80s. Uh, we are so fortunate to have the bike trail system that we do. I'm an avid biker, have been over the years mostly mountain biking, but um, spent a lot of time walking on the, on the paths here in town. And really, uh, that's been a result of, of uh, living in a really progressive community. Our uh, community services, our city staff, our city council, working cooperatively with Lyon County, uh, DNR, have gotten those things done. So we're fortunate. I know, having lived here for 30 years, we talked about having a bike trail system for a long time and having Camden as a destination. And all of a sudden, it just happened. You know, it's just when a couple of year period had happened. And, uh, you know, when my kids were little, now they're in high school, we used to load up all of our bikes and we'd haul them to Lake Chatech or we'd haul them to someplace else so they could ride safely on a bike trail because you just didn't feel comfortable with them on the streets. Of course, now they're driving cars more than they are bikes, which is a whole other set of worries, but it really is reassuring as a parent to have a safe place for your kids to bike. And it's great to have a destination like Camden to go to. Um, as I understand it, I visit with Scott uh, Vandermillen here a couple weeks ago. They're going to be completing the last section of that trail from Marshall to Camden uh, this coming spring. So if that area along the diversion channel over by the Lyon County Fairgrounds is going to be complete. So that trail will be complete. So not only will this uh, trail system encircle Marshall almost completely, you'll be able to go all the way out to Camden State Park. Next slide, please. Another audience participation. How much can you reduce your risk of cardiovascular disease by walking regularly? If you think 5%, stand up. 95%. 10%? Or 30%? It is 30%. So we can control a lot of what happens to us. And 30% is a big percentage when you think about the, uh, the risks of cardiovascular disease and the costs associated with it. Having 30% control is a pretty big factor. Uh, safe routes to school. Bruce Lamprecht from our committee representing Healthy 56258 and the Marshall School District has been very involved in the safe routes to school. Uh, application that uh, community members have also been involved in, the city staff. And so um, there will be a infrastructure grant submitted for safe routes to school submitted by fall of 2017. And the whole purpose of the safe routes to school grant application and program is to encourage kids to ride their bike, uh, walk to school, but we not only want them to get that exercise, but we want them to do it safely. So this infrastructure grant will take a look at crosswalks, signage, uh, different uh, infrastructure things, plus it'll provide some community education. Um, several years ago, there was a group that came into town, um, Bicycle, Bicycle Alliance of Minnesota, that approached us about becoming a uh, bicycle-friendly community. And I know we had some meetings about that, and again, uh, visiting with Scott here a couple weeks ago. 
it's something that has kind of risen to the surface again, and there might be another opportunity uh, in June for people to provide some input or to get together. Marshall is certainly become much more bicycle friendly over the past few years, which I know I have really appreciated. So uh, there, there might be some, you might be reading more about that coming up here in the future. And then I did talk about uh, safe routes to school a little bit already. And I think I'm turning this over to Faith, Cassie, Stacy. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Oh, come on, that's dry. Hello, everyone. <laughs> All right, it's a sunny day outside, so you know, let's get going. I know it's a little dry sometimes with all this information, but it's good information, okay? My name is Cassie Williams. I'm the Academic Specialist for our Office of Diversity and Inclusion and Access Opportunity Success at SMSU. And I've had the privilege to work with these wonderful people uh, for a year, uh, pretty close. Um, and so today I'm going to talk to you about hunger and food insecurities in higher education. So how many of you remember those days where you were eating Roman noodles, hot dogs, maybe some vending machine meals, that's me. So <laughs> I don't miss it. <laughs> Uh, nationally, nationally, many colleges and universities are providing support and establishing programs for their students who are struggling to attain daily nutrition. Food insecurities are affecting students in both two-year and four-year college and universities. According to Hunger on Campus report that is based on a 2016 survey that, has condu that was conducted um, at 23 colleges and universities. 57% of students that are affected by food insecurities are first-generation college students, and 52% are Pell Grant uh, recipients. 43% of those students are affected by, that are affected by food insecurities have meal plans. So meal plans are not completely helping the issues of hunger. At SMSU, 50.4% of our undergraduate students are first-generation college students. 37.4% of undergraduate students are Pell Grant el eligible. So our thoughts is with that number that we have at SMSU, maybe we need to take a deeper look at the possibility of there being food insecurities on our campus. So in April, myself and Faith, uh, we attended the Campus Hunger Summit that was held at Metro State University. This summit was put on by Second Harvest Heartland. There we learned a number of colleges across the nation are starting food pantries or some sort of resource center um, on their campus. And this, these pictures here, this is one of the areas at Metro State. Uh, this particular area was uh, pretty neat because students are able to uh, pick up, pick up an item or two and go to class, or they can come back every two weeks and get food for themselves and their families. And this is one of the uh, holding areas for the food that they receive. They have a really nice uh, food pantry. So with the information that we've learned and, and what we know about SMSU as far as there being uh, Pell Grant recipients, our numbers there, and students that, that are underrepresented or, um, or first generation, we decided to, pos to plan or establish a campus resource hub, and this will be called Nutrition Network. Nutrition Network would provide food, toiletries, and be a connector to uh, possible um, community resources in, ver in various areas as housing, SNAP information, child care referrals. Um, a lot of times students don't ask those things. I mean, I work with first generation low income students of color. They don't always tell us when they need things. And so this will be an area that those students can go to and get information. 
We understand that food insecurity can inf interfere with students' ability to be successful or even complete college. At SMSU, we provide ourselves we pride ourselves in providing academic support and training necessary for students to enter their ideal careers. Why not join Healthy 56258 in an effort to help students think less about how they're going to eat and more about how they're going to be successful? Thank you. Faith. Hello, everyone. I'm Faith Depute, the AmeriCorps VISTA. Uh, VISTA stands for Volunteer in Service to America, and I'm serving Marshall through Healthy 56258. Uh, VISTA's focus on project sustainability, which is a little ironic because we are essentially working ourselves out of our job, but that's the capacity building benefit. Uh, this is the last year of VISTA for Healthy 56258, but before I go, I'm going to share a project that I'm working on. It's in the school sector and it's a focus on healthy eating and it's known as Smarter Lunchrooms Movement. It's evidence-based and developed by two Cornell professors using economics, marketing, psychology to nudge students towards making a healthy lunch choice. In fact, the Smarter Lunchroom National Office is getting ready for their seventh annual symposium, which is occurring today in New York. So it's kind of funny that we're talking about this today. So Healthy 56258 has been a connector. Uh, Cassie and I sat down with the Taher Food Director for Marshall Public Schools, a SHIP employee with extensive background in this movement, and Bruce Lampert, who is working on the wellness policy. And we decided we want to do this movement at the middle school. So how does this movement work? There is going to be a pre-assessment, and ours is scheduled for later this month. We look at the lunchroom to see, okay, what's going well? What are some things we could improve on? And what's feasible to, what's, what changes are feasible to implement? Then we implement the changes, and then there's a post-assessment. And I mentioned that this is evidence-based, so I'm going to look at what other people have done. Other people have looked at the wellness policy for this movement. Uh, so we're going to look at our wellness policy for the public schools. We also look at systems, so the PSC, this is this. And we know that giving healthy food choices fun descriptive names can increase consumption by more than 30%. So how can we create a system to do this? Next slide, please. This is an example. Uh, these students are holding up signs. I don't know if you can read them, but they designed them and they'll be displayed at the lunchroom during the lunch hour. They labeled foods with names like brain boosting broccoli, perfect peaches, and my favorite is big bad bean burrito. <laughs> we also look at environmental changes. All right, so this is another participation. According to the Smarter Lunchroom Movements, moving fruit from a stainless steel tray to a colorful bowl can increase sales as much as, who thinks it's A, 25%? All right, how about B, 50%? C, 75%? And D, 100%? The answer is D, 100%. The sales actually doubled. Yeah, it's surprising. Next slide. Uh, this next statistic is from the uh, Smarter Lunch Movement, offering sliced fruit can increase student consumption by more than 70%. So the last one was sales, this one's actually consumption. Uh, from my own experience, uh, at a VISTA training, I did a mini experiment, and we offered whole apples and sliced apples right next to each other during lunch. Of the 11 people who ate lunch, seven took the sliced apples, and no one took the whole apple. So when I asked why that was, they said convenience. Convenience is a huge factor. So let's make healthy choices the convenient choice. So not a bag of chips. We want sliced apples. 
Uh, if you're interested in learning more about this movement, you can talk to me uh, after the event. We're here till 1.30. That's how long we have the room. Or on the reply devices, remember Stacy mentioned at the beginning, uh, you can check off the Smarter Luncher movement. All right, now Stacy is up. Thank you, Faith. So maybe some of you have your wheels turning pretty quickly by now. Some of this is very transferable at home. It's transferable at our workplace. I know if I slice bananas and throw them in a little bowl and put them on the dinner table, they get eaten. If I put a banana in front of the boys' plate, may or may not. I might have to say, you have to eat your banana. So everything that we're learning as a steering committee and as an initiative, it, you just don't have to stretch too far to put it in your own daily practice. So my team is very excited about my presentation because I've added a little something something for all of you. Um, mental health, it's not an easy topic to um, uh, broach, but we want to really um, make it something that we can speak about and have a discussion around. So I love this quote, we need to change the culture of this topic and make it okay to speak about mental health and suicide. In my immediate family, I've lost a grandma and an uncle, different families, um, to suicide, and it's really an important topic to me because I think mental health, I like to think holistically when we talk about um, Healthy 56258, and I've got a lot of great colleagues in this room that have helped me um, understand that it all fits together like a puzzle. So I'm just going to start by sharing a couple of examples in the community to show that we're aware of what's going on maybe more so behind the scenes, but we want to take a lead in trying to bring all of those um, initiatives together because as uh, someone mentioned already, we've got some, some du duplication of efforts that we really want to try and centralize. We're all aiming towards the same target, but how we're getting there is a little bit different, so we want to try and centralize and find some efficiencies there. So last night, as recent as that, I sat at a Marshall Public School strategic planning meeting with a few of you in the room, Tom and Tom, Scott Vandermillen, there's a few of you at that meeting. And one thing that we were really impressed by was um, the Marshall or the Minnesota um, State School Board Association led us through some conversation. And what they did is they uh, interviewed about 50 more, more than 50 students, faculty, and administrators and asked them, what are some strengths in the school district? And what are some things that you, they call it delta change, some things that you want to see change? And uh, I was really struck and I hope those of you that were there were too, that it wasn't just the, the um, teachers and the administrators, but the students readily lifted up mental health. And that's one thing they spoke to right away when asked. And so that really, that kind of gave me goosebumps because we hear about it. And I sat through um, a various community health needs assessment. They're a nonprofit that has to do a health survey for the community and, and that, um, they brought a bunch of us nonprofit folks together. It was probably going on half a year ago or more, but uh, we sat in a room, uh, Judy Pitzel attended one evening and I was at another and it was cops and nonprofit folks, community members, but um, Southwest Initiative Foundation was at that meeting too. And we listened to each other and broke into small groups and had a lot of discussion, but there too, at the end of the night, all arrows pointed to mental health. So um, when we talk about eight dimensions of a community, that's kind of a bland in thing. We talk about infrastructure and mental health affects our infrastructure and how we relate to one another as human beings every single minute. So some stats, they aren't gonna you know, be new news to you, but I'm gonna put them out there anyway. Um, there are 121 suicides every day, just point blank. And uh, men die by suicide 3.5 times more than women. And in ages 10 through 24, suicide is the second leading cause of death. So that's an age group that I really want to spend some time on. And it might have something to do with having some boys in that age range as well. So one thing that struck me, uh, Deanne Reese sat on our original uh, um, education sector team. She and Bruce Lamprecht headed that up. And she's now at Parkside Elementary. And then we've got Deb Herman, who's a nurse out at the high school. Well, there was a really cool event last Saturday. We had SMSU commencement going on, but I know Tom Bolin and Deb, there was a lot of you in this room involved in Out of the Darkness. And that was a, a walk to represent, you know, just the movement and the idea of being able to talk about suicide. 
And there's other things going on all the time. On campus, we had a super successful fresh check day, thanks to our colleagues in counseling services. Um, Dr. Sarah Fear is a good friend of mine. Um, that grant was received so we could have kind of an open house feel for all of our college students to talk about mental health and, and go to some different booths and experience some different things, not to be shy about it. And it was really well attended. So of course, poor Sarah, I tap her on the shoulder and I say, well, what can we do to get more ages involved in this? So on the very website of this family foundation, it talks about how they're expanded to high schools. And so I'm gonna totally look into that and figure out how we can get this going here. Because there's a need, there's a desire as volunteers to put some uh, effort towards it. We just need to get together and, and figure out how. And then um, another colleague of mine, Sarah Ackerman, uh, she's here in the room. Uh, Western Mental Health, we've seen that big, beautiful addition to our community, but it's what's inside of that building that's important. And the resources that we have for our community um, through not just Western Mental Health, but other professionals in the community, it's really important for us to be able to share that with one another and make sure people know that there's options out there and people to talk to. So um, just want to lift that up. We're really proud, and that's a big symbol for our community, that that's something that we're not ashamed. We want to be able to get help for everyone in a holistic manner. So if you will, everybody on your feet, please. And I need some help for this portion of the program. You, my friends, are going to be the backbeat. So I need you to do this. <laughs> And if you're out there, Vogel, maybe a wiki, 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 wherever you want to fit it in. All right, so here we go. Louder. To be healthy as a whole, mental wellness plays a role. To be healthy as a whole, mental wellness plays a role. Now I'm going to do backbeat, and you're going to say it. Go. Thank you. Have a seat. Woo! Drop the mic. Just kidding. All right. So they bribed me and I said, you dare me, I'm going to do it now. All right. I think I got everything accomplished except the most important thing, and that's to invite you. If you'd like to be a part of the mental health uh, work group, um, Cassie and I are going to lead that up as champions for that. And with all of these where we end with an invitation, we're going to go ahead and get our information out to you so you know when we have our meeting, we have work plans kind of started, but we weren't gonna go any further without all of your involvement. So we're gonna reach out. If we don't hear from you, we're gonna reach out to you because we wanna have um, the right kind of formula for putting this to the next step. And on your tables, in your folders, I think actually, there's a concept map. It's that circle that shows exactly what we're going after, going after in, in inviting you into the work that we're doing. And that map, if you've got it at your table, show everybody. I mean, that's really what our work is about. So we've got healthy living, healthy eating, healthy minds, kind of as the wraparound. And then inside of that is the work group, um, the, the tripod, if you will, or the work that we're going to go after. So with that, I've humiliated myself long enough. I'd like to introduce Chris and Judy to come up and talk about worksite wellness. They are paying me a lot of money after this, too, because a lot of them said, you won't do it. Yeah. Right here, pass the hat. The hat. Hello, Judy. Can I have you advance? I really don't know how to follow that. Sorry. So we're moving on now to promoting health in our workplaces. So why do we want to talk about workplace? So when we look at the Healthy 56258, our mission, healthy lifestyles, healthy eating, healthy minds, let's think about how much time we spend at work. The workplace is a very captive audience. And I don't know about all of you, but sometimes you feel like you're at work all the time, right? So also, many of us spend too much time at work in a sitting position. Let me bounce in here with another opportunity for you all to stand. According 
This, this document is in your yellow folder as well, but according to the 2015 Southwest Minnesota Healthy Communities Surveys, what percentage of Lyon County, so specific to our county here, adults are classified as overweight or obese? Please stand if you believe that figure is 43%. Please stand if you believe that figure is 53%. Again, please stand if you believe it's 63%. Lastly, 73%, please stand. You are correct. That statistic for Lyon County is 73% are classified as overweight or obese. Next slide. So to segue off of that, let's talk about how much we think we need to be active. So again, we'll answer by standing up. So how many minutes of physical activity per week should Americans get? If you believe it's A, 75 minutes of moderate activity, stand up. If you believe it's B, 150 minutes of moderate activity. If you believe it's C, 200 minutes of moderate activity. And if you believe it's D, it really doesn't matter. <laughs> Good, thank you. So the correct answer is B, 150 minutes of moderate activity. So uh, let's take a look at this next question. What percentage of residents, we're back to Lyon County, did not meet this moderate and or vigorous exercise recommendation? Lyon County, which ones did not meet it? A, 42%, please stand up. 52%, please stand up. <laughs> 62%, please stand up. Lastly, 82%, please stand up. The correct response is 62%. We have a fourth and final polling question here. And hopefully this one is going to hit home a little bit. So the last polling question, the average American adult spends how many hours per day sitting? If you believe it's A, 13 hours. If you believe it's B, 4 hours. If you believe it's C, 9 hours. And D, 16 hours. All right, the correct answer is A, 13 hours a day we spend sitting. That's why we're having you stand up so much today. <laughs> okay, that is the end of our polling questions. Um, I'm moving on to knowing that Lyon County has 73% of adults classified as overweight or obese, coupled with the other local statistic that 62% of residents did not meet the weekly exercise recommendations a common sense solution is to work with small employers to increase both healthy eating and active living in the workplace. When we use the reference to a small employer, that is a classification of anywhere from two employees to 100 employees. So if you hear that reference on occasion, a small employer is classified under 100 employees. Our work plan goal is to create healthy eating and active living opportunities in the workplace through sustainable policy system and environmental changes, including social supports, awareness, and enforcement. I'll reference this slide next. The community progress to date includes Healthy 56258 serving as a connector through a Lunch and Learn launch event hosted here at the YMCA in March of 2015. That's the photo that you see on the screen. A convening of the area employers took place to learn more about workplace wellness and the opportunity to join a free 12-month pilot collaborative through a Healthier Southwest, which is funded by the Statewide Health Improvement Partnership Grant. Seven area employers partnered, and with the PSC work potentially reaching over seven, excuse me, over 3,000 area employers. Since this May of 2015 to May of 2016 collaborative, these employers have convened as a group 
with alumni status to continue to share, learn, and advance their workplace wellness initiatives. So these are the seven listed that participated in the pilot workplace wellness collaborative. So please allow me to share a workplace wellness example of PSE work produced from partnering with a healthier Southwest. In an effort to increase physical activity in the workplace, Southwest Health and Human Services chose to offer a standing meeting room. Ideal for meetings lasting 60 minutes or less. The opportunity was embedded in their wellness policy along with walking meetings. The system change was the creation of an Outlook calendar to enable all staff the opportunity to utilize the meeting space. The environmental change was twofold, securing a physical room location and designating the space along with the purchase of two adjustable standing tables. That's PSC in action. So I just want to add the um, grant that Judy was talking about, SMSU participated, and we were given a lot of great information on where to start, because I'll talk a little bit about how hard it is to start. And we were able to, to form an SMSU wellness work group, which I see some of my work group colleagues out there. Um, so we're able to um, start that process. Okay. So again, why do we focus on work? We already talked about that a little bit. You can see by the slide that many gears turn to lead us to unhealthy lifestyles. And at work, we often fall into these three. A little bit difficult to read, but poor calorie choices. We're busy. We don't have time to get that lunch prepared like we should have. A sedentary work day, which leads to what we call a positive caloric balance. So we take in too many calories and don't expend enough. So how do we reverse those gears? A couple ideas. Good food choices during the day. And again, an active work day, such as Judy talked about the standing workstations and standing meetings or walking meetings. So the collaboration between Healthy 56258 and SMSU Exercise Science Program's Corporate Wellness and Health Promotion class led to the development of a worksite wellness manual. The collaboration was really a win-win. The students were able to put into practice what they learned and developed guidelines for how a small business can implement worksite wellness. Often the person that takes on the role of workplace wellness is passionate about wellness, sees a need, but is lacking time or resources. So the development of the workplace manual will give those of you who need it a place to start, which is probably the hardest part. The information provided helps you to create a sustainable worksite wellness plan. So the workbook focuses on needs assessment. So looking at what is the needs of my particular place of business. Goals, how to set those realistic goals with the employees. And topics such as nutrition, physical activity, stress management, mental health. The list goes on. Also included in this wellness workbook or manual are flyers that you can use in your program. One page, quick things that you can use at a lunch and learn, hanging up in the, in the uh, break room, things like that. So that opportunity will be available as well through Healthy 56258. So I would like to close with an invitation to be involved. If you are passionate about wellness in the workplace setting or have a reputation for being a wellness advocate, please consider joining this local effort to assist area employers in improving healthy eating and active living in the workplace. Next, I'll turn it back over to Stacy. All right, thank you very much for all of those uh, work group invitations. I'd invite you to pull your reply device out now and take a look and see if there are some things that triggered. And I've got one more important thing to do before we close here. So all of the things that we've been able to accomplish in the past year really have been due to grant support that we received through ADM, United Way, 
uh, Southwest Minnesota State University Foundation. Um, we've just got some great support in the community. And I think what we need now is really apparent to us as a steering committee, but we need to share what we know with you folks, and I'm gonna do that now. We have been dreaming about hiring an executive director. And the last couple pages in your yellow packet, if you wanna take those out, really spell out what we're looking to accomplish through that role. All of us are volunteers, and we're getting the work done, but not in any way, shape, or form in the timely manner an efficient manner that could be done through an executive director's leadership. The vision would be for that person to be that person in the community, at the meetings, at the table, representing what a healthy community is about, and really just ringing the bell when there's conversation about how do we help Marshall grow, prosper, sustain, all those important things. So there's flavors of economic development in that folder. It talks a lot about how much a sick employee costs versus how much a well employee costs. It talks a lot about how we, as a grassroots organization, have really been stair-stepping along with the help from some great sponsors. But an executive director could take us truly to the next level. Marshall Community Foundation is through the uh, Southwest Initiative Foundation. That board of directors has helped support us with a VISTA position, so that's personnel-based. Um, we've just been very, very blessed to be able to sort of build our partnerships and, and, and show our credibility as well. That's a huge part of this. Anytime you have a grant, there's a lot of pieces to that where you have to show and tell, just like today is. And I think um, if you're a part of an organization or if you have an idea of how this might come about, we'd like to visit with you about it. Uh, Bruce Lamprecht and I spent some time uh, with Cal and Karen from the chamber. We wanted to know what's out there, what do we need to be doing? And that uh, workplace manual was right away something Cal came up with. He said, this is something our Marshall businesses could benefit from. Okay, check that. I mean, we want to answer to what the community is looking for. And with an executive director, that's how this is going to take the next step. Now, there are communities that have that, and that position can be a government position, that position can be a nonprofit. Sometimes that position's through the Y. Uh, Get Fit Itasca in Grand Rapids is really a huge model for us, and they kind of delivered their grassroots initiative through the YMCA, which we're doing just differently. Um, but a lot of times it just takes conversations with the right people to get further faster, and that's really what we want to reach out to help you dream and plan with us how that executive director position could come to fruition. So I'm super excited. Um, we're making some changes at SMSU. Um, Office of Civic Engagement has gotten some traction in the last month and a half here. There's just so much good going on. It's really connecting the dots and figuring out how to go about it. And if that's something that you enjoy doing, um, please talk to any one of us afterwards. So with that, I'd like to thank everybody. Um, please remember your reply device. We're gonna put Tom and Tom at the door out here. And that's your ticket out of here. So wait before they get there. Otherwise, come on, Deanne, really. But we've got these great door prizes up here, and that'll be a package door prize. So your reply device will go in a drawing. And uh, truly, if there's anything that struck you or if there's something that you blatantly saw missing from today's conversation, write that. You can't offend us. We get, um, we get tapped on a lot of different levels. And uh, hopefully you understand that we're not going to be probably promoting the next 5K. We are about policy, system, and environmental change. So thanks so much. Appreciate your time today, and have a great week.